Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Tacoma SRT5 coming at you with the 186 FA um, electric start conversion for the uh, this is a 10 horse diesel engine from the jungle site. Um, now, I got this electric start conversion kit, but no bolts came included. So I thought I'd help a brother out, if you will, if you're interested in doing electric start conversion. The starter bolts are right here and up behind there, which you can get through, come on, there we go. Now, I tighten them down by hand, you know, um, if you've been working on, with your hands long enough, yeah, I didn't know how tight to tighten it, so I listened to my hands. When the bolt stops turning, you don't convince it to go further because you're working with aluminum here. Now those two starter bolts are right here, M10 by 1.5, 30 millimeters. And you'll see the end of the bolt is tight and flush with the block, so it's not going to be in the way of anything. Now, I've also used, um, I don't know where it went, but... Uh, Blue Loctite, as well as tightening them down to good and tight. So give me one second and we'll go to the next thing. We are now on to the stator or alternator, depends on how you define it, what you call it. I'm calling it a stator because it needs to go to the rectifier or voltage regulator, whatever. It also does not come with bolts. So I got these bolts and lock washers, and I'm gonna be using blue Loctite. And these bolts are, M6 by 100, 1.00, and 20 millimeters long. And there's five in a set. So you'll have three for here, and three, two for your voltage regulator, right there and right there. On to the next thing. We're, I'm going to put them on, and we'll and we'll go uh, and we'll move forward. All right, now you're uh, somewhere in here. Somewhere in here is the other end to this plug. Why am I telling you this? Why is this important? Because that plug will not fit through that hole. You need to feed the wires through without putting the plug end on first. That plug end will not, these two barely fit through together. I'm gonna fish them through there. And, come on. As long as we get them most of the way, I guess. Now this right here, this little bolt, is to keep this out of the way of the flywheel. So I'm going to have to make something to make that work. In the meantime, we will now go to these. Package of three. Part number M6 by 1.00, 20 millimeters long. These are the shortest ones I could find, so I will probably have to tap them with a grinder once I install the magnet here onto the flywheel. So, line them like up like that, line them up. We're going to get our Loctite on there. I'm Loctiting everything because I have a feeling this diesel engine is going to shake a lot. So uh, let me pause here and we'll get those screws in. Okay, so here's a side note. Be really careful when trying to put these on. Get these started with your fingers because, uh, well, I made a big old mess. I had to go clean my hands, but I got Loctite all over my hands and the magnet. It kept sucking it off to the side. <laughs> you said. All right, let's go get a Phillips head. Okay, now we are screwed in. Um, I had to about put the entirety of my weight on the palm of my hand, pushing down with one hand and twisting with the other 
till I got to a comfortable stopping point. Again, I'm not a certified technician. I am not a certified small diesel repair guy. I am just doing this without directions because I didn't get directions. But uh, at least we got the right type of screws. These are sunken heads or uh, recessed heads times five. Nope, that's the wrong one. These ones times three. Package of three. Machine screw flathead Phillips. I think they mean the, the top of the screw is flat because uh, we don't want interference between this and the stator. So these I have chosen because they have a small head width, head height, and it is about the same as the plastic right here. I don't know if that's a good angle or not, but it's close. It's close enough. Close enough for state work. All right, on to the next thing. Okay, so small problems require small solutions. We didn't have the bracket, so I found a bolt that matched the thread pat, the thread pitch. A small washer into a big washer and that holds that firmly in place we are good to go um, I guess we are yep we've already covered that now we're gonna go back on with the flywheel I do know I did read the flywheel main nut goes behind the washer 135 foot-pounds of torque so that's about as much as my little 3 8 Milwaukee will put out, so I'm just going to max it out. And uh, we'll go from there. Alright, well the neighbor's cutting his lawn, so y'all going to have to deal, but I have a, uh, we'll say, appropriate amount of Loctite, given I don't want this to fall apart on the highway. This is my diesel engine for the motorcycle. This isn't some go-kart, golf cart going 15 miles an hour, so I am Loctiting everything. Got our seven, 27 millimeter socket, and we got our Milwaukee 3 8 set on three. Oh, whoops, I didn't pause it. <laughs> okay, well, do you remember how I said those are the shortest bolts I could find? Yep, that's not gonna work. So, uh, I'm gonna take out my grinder and uh, touch on them a little bit. All right, real quick, something I just did. I held the decompression lever down all the way and I spun this by hand freely this is only going to go so far but Ow. you see it spins freely we don't hear any scratching and now we're at the compression stroke it won't go any further so okay on to the grinding all right now we've given our bolts a little massage of the old grinder that should be about good and on to the next step okay this next step is putting this uh i don't know cog bowl on for the uh, pull starter and if you notice these it, it's not your eyes it doesn't look funny there's only one position that this goes on so I'll get the camera like this so you can see that's not right Nope. 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 Maybe. Nope. And there we go. And these four bolts I'm putting back because those are the ones that were holding it in. And I'm also going back to the good old Loctite. And, uh,. Yeah, I was able to loosen these by hand. I always guess these are about 18 foot-pounds. Um, 
you're not going into aluminum anymore. This is now cast iron, so you can be a little more, I don't know, we'll say generous with your uh, wrist gauged ugga duggas. But I'm, again, I just kind of go till the bolt talks to me and says, I'm not turning any further. And if I try and turn it further, it's just going to break the bolt. So I like to make sure everything's on good and tight. All right, uh, let me get these uh, locked tighted up and started and screwed in. All right, so now we've got our pull start assembly to go back on. We have our four bolts, which we took off to take it off. And we've got the lid all scratched up because it's been laying on the floor. But that's all right. It's got some kind of rubber gasket here. Make sure that's on. And these rubber grommets, they came on it. So let's make sure, where is it? Make sure they go back on. Kind of roll this, roll this up. Oh, that's right. We had to pick the motor up just a little bit. How am I going to do this? Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's go put this down. Doing this one handed and alone. Okay. Now, you take this. For sure. Go back on here. Okay. Just kind of get it all lined up. And before this falls off, I'm going to get one of these bolts started. And uh, get this one started, lock tight the others, and then get them started. And we'll go from there. We've got one here, one there, one there, and one just next to the starter. Now that we've got our bolts tightened down, again, just about wrist tight, we've got our blue lock tight. Permatex, whatever. Now we're going to turn the engine here and find our little blue wires that we stuck through earlier. There's one, there's two, and we'll pull them down here and now we find our plastic clip. Here's the plastic clip. Now size comparison here. Now you can understand why it doesn't or wouldn't fit through the hole. That teeny tiny little, you know, quarter inch hole. This is probably about an inch and a quarter long, an inch wide. And this is going to mount here and plug into there. So uh, I wonder if I can set you all up here. Come on. Oops. All right, maybe that'll work. Bear with me. Okay, so now the tapered edge is going to go into this like that. And you'll see the flat end and then the vertical end. We will, I don't know which way it's supposed to go, ah, I see, there's a little catch here, there's a tiny little catch in there which the camera won't be able to capture, but maybe, just maybe you could hear the click, there's one. Plug that into there. Give 
them an extra shove. Maybe not. No, they were good. But maybe give them an extra shove just in case. And now, well, those screws are talking out before. The ones from Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply is not sponsoring me. I just uh, try and help people out with products. Uh, this and this ten horse engine is a jungle jungle website product. Uh, it's a 186 FA. The electric start conversion kit is from eBay for about 150 bucks. You can buy the conversion kit. So the engine itself is 300. The conversion kit is 150. So that brings it to 450. Now, what I don't understand is why um, if you just buy one of these engines equipped with the uh, electric start from the factory, and it's like 800 bucks. It does not take that much time or effort. I realize this video is 13 minutes long. And trust me, I've been working on this for more than 13 minutes, and I had to figure out the thread pitch and whatever. But, a quick trip up the street, you know, if you got the means, go ahead. Just buy the electric start and hook up your battery and be on your way. But for guys like me, you know, I'm just not, not feeling the whole uh, 800 bucks. So that one. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22 now. Um, I like to uh, kind of massage the thread locker into the threads, so that way you don't have gobs of thread locker coming out the sides. Only what is truly extra. That's not pretty, but basically what I do here. I always. Especially, especially when you're dealing with aluminum, or more importantly, your block that you can't always machine if you uh, screw up. I always, always screw things in as far as I can with my fingers, because some threads are really close, and they will uh, screw in. You're like one, two, three threads. Okay, I'm good. And then you take the impact to it, and then realize that you just screwed, screwed up real bad. So here again. Now we got our extension, but no problems whatsoever screwing this screw in. And again, we've got our Loctite and our lock washers. So I'm just going to give that a little uh, wrist tight. Put my thumb here. And then it really, you know, it has some firmness in turning, but then it'll really kind of come to a stop. A pretty legit point where it just says, I don't want to turn anymore. So don't test fade. There we go. Now, onto the ignition, I guess. And we'll go from there. Okay, we've got our ignition switch plugged in. This is the uh, the key, and then the harness. We come up here, and you'll see the white wire connects to that spade terminal. Right there, like that. You slide that rubber part over and make sure that's good. The brown plugs into the red, the blue plugs into the blue. And we're almost there, so I'm going to cut this off here, and uh, we'll make a part two, so look out for that. <laughs> 